Uh, my name is Nigel French. I'm, I work at Massey University. I'm Professor of Food Safety and Veterinary Public Health um, in the Institute of Veterinary Animal and Biomedical Sciences, which is the, the vet school. Uh, my background is I'm trained as a veterinary surgeon originally, and, um, and then I went into the field of uh, epidemiology, studying population, uh, particularly infectious disease, and set up a, um, laboratories in, in the United Kingdom and here in New Zealand, looking specifically at, at infectious diseases that are transmitted between animals and man. So that's the, the area that I'm most interested in. And this really brings, uh, so I'm here at the, uh, the Transit of Venus um, event in, in Gisborne, and uh, we're talking in a session about the importance of the connectedness between human health, animal health, and by animals I mean both domestic animals and wildlife, and ecosystem health, and how those are related to each other. Uh, ecosystem health is, is extremely important. Uh, we get a number of uh, goods and services from ecosystems that are directly linked to health, particularly through uh, the control of pathogens and infectious disease. And probably the best example of that is the provision of fresh drinking water and also recreational water. I think these are particular issues for New Zealand because New Zealand has very high rates of infectious diseases that come from animals in the human population. Um, in fact, some of the highest rates in the world. Many of these come through the food route, but also environmental contact and water are very important for the transmission of these diseases. And by understanding how these are transmitted, um, where they're coming from, which animal reservoirs they're coming from, which transmission pathways are leading to, to human infection, we can put measures in place to try and reduce that. And we've had considerable success recently through a combination of using molecular tools and modelling to identify sources of infection to improve the health of New Zealanders. And the best example is the control of campylobacteriosis, um, which was reduced by 50% uh, uh, three or four years ago as a result of interventions informed by the research that we were doing. So looking to the future, I think uh, the application of modern scientific tools from better modelling to a better understanding of the transmission cycles and through the use of molecular tools, including full genome sequencing, uh, we can get a better handle on how diseases are transmitted and try and put in place measures to reduce that. That improves human health, reduces the financial consequences of ill health, days lost to work, um, increase, improves the welfare of human beings. I mean, 16,000 human cases of Campylobacter over in just in a single period is, is a huge burden of, of ill health. That's reduced by 50% and now uh, is estimated to save the economy around about $40 million per year just simply from that uh, series of interventions. And I think these tools that we're using can also help uh, not just human health but also improving animal health, in particular wildlife health. So we're applying these tools uh, in conservation to understand uh, the implications for infectious disease transmission for the translocation of wildlife. Um, which is a major conservation tool and uh, I think uh, so looking to the future these improved tools should help through this One Health framework, this One Health paradigm, help to improve New Zealand populations generally and so by that we're talking about the po human population, we're talking about domestic animal populations as well as wildlife. There's, uh, I mean historically um, until the advent of some of the newer sequencing tools and technologies. There was a lot of ignorance around, um, around the origins and sources and transmission of infections from animals to humans. And I think that's what's improved most significantly recently. Um, we now have a much better understanding of where humans are getting their infections from, and that has a direct bearing on policy for controlling, controlling diseases such as, that, such as those. Um, so we, we now have a better understanding of what proportion of cases come through food routes, which come through environmental uh, con direct contact and water routes. And, and that really has only happened in, in recent years as a, as a result of better tools, which have come out of very um, uh, blue sky scientific developments, which have seen a very rapid path to, to direct applied uh, applications, which have had a huge bearing on, on public health. 
I, I think it was the age-old um, issue of funding. I think it's very important to get funding, and as I mentioned before, about getting funding from from uh, uh, cross-sectoral sources as well in order to get a sustained programme. Being able to coordinate efforts um, across disciplines and across between organisations, and that's one of the reasons why I've set up the uh, Infectious Disease Research Centre, which is a, uh, a cross-disciplinary research centre, um, is to try and break down some of those boundaries and to really get a, a much better collaborative uh, interdisciplinary um, approach to research. And I think that's something that will be uh, uh, of huge benefit in the future. To inform policy making, key decisions around policy making for the control of infectious disease and the major economic benefits that can ensue from those from good decision making.